to introduce Dr. Michael Larata from the United States who prescribes LDN. Thank you for joining me, Michael. Thank you. It's a pleasure. Could you tell us when you first heard about LDN? Yes, I first heard about it in uh, 2010, and it uh, was uh, something I was exposed to to um, uh, when, in my treatment of patients with multiple sclerosis. I had not actually heard of it until then, and a fair number of them had found that this medication was helpful in relief of some of their symptoms. And since I had not encountered this, I um, took it upon myself to learn about it as it was a new medication. And what was interesting is that uh, it was not something I really was able to find uh, as much information in the traditional medical literature. I actually found uh, more information available from uh, searching the web and actually from Facebook, of all things. Mm -hmm. So um, how did you go about per prescribing LDM? Was it just purely for MS patients or did you treat other <laughs> autoimmune conditions? Yes. Um, fortunately, I had a physician that uh, I had a collaborative relationship with. Uh, it was actually in Canada, and he uh, had been using uh, LDN for several years prior to that. And I was able to, um, you know, learn how he found it was helpful in his practice. And in fact, some of the patients that I was treating were were common patients. And so it was something that I was able to get up to speed fairly quickly. I think. And I began using it in patients that also had MS, but uh, over the time, so approximately uh, two to three years ago, I started to have a more diverse uh, population base myself. And, and rather than just seeing multiple sclerosis patients, I started to see patients with chronic fatigue and fibromyalgia, uh, chronic Lyme, et cetera. And I found that it's been helpful in each of these populations. And uh, I also see patients now with various other forms of uh, dysautonomia, and one thing that's been interesting is that in virtually all, I mean, the vast majority of patients who have dysautonomia also suffer from SIBO, which is uh, bacterial overgrowth in the small intestine, and a big component of that is uh, dysmotility in the gut as a result of autumn dysfunction. And LDN, with its prokinetic properties, is actually helpful for the treatment of SIBO. So it's, uh, it's a medication that has sort of a broad applicability in the population of patients that I see. Mm -hmm. And where do you see LDN going in the future? Well, that's a very interesting question. Um, it appears that it is starting to have uh, more traction in, quote, mainstream medicine. You see places like uh, Stanford University and Cleveland Clinic, for example, now starting to embrace it, which is, uh, which is fantastic. Um, as we're all painfully aware, the pharmaceutical industry really is what drives research. And, you know, without a financial motive, it's going to be a, a big hurdle as far as uh, you know, in, in increasing the indications and such if we were to look at it from that perspective in the United States anyways. But uh, off-label use of medications is, is fairly typical, uh, at least in this country. And I think it's more of a, a matter of exposure and education issue because the, um, you know, the, the ease of use, the, uh, you know, the, the side effect profile is very favorable and the safety of the drug is, is pretty well established. So I think that um, it's a matter of getting the information out there that this is something that's helpful, w which will disseminate through more of uh, the other specialists and primary care physicians to increase its usage. I mean, there's, there's no question in my mind, anyways, that this is a drug that has a role for chronic diseases. Um, it's, it's really a matter of getting the word out, I think, is what's going to be the key. Mm -hmm. And if there is somebody listening out there who would like to come and see you, how would they contact you? Well, um, you know, I can be reached by a number of different methods and the, the internet is probably the, the easiest. Um, social media has really sort of changed my practice and so uh, I probably get a, a majority of my patients actually through my Facebook page of all things. Um, you know, that's, that's probably the most readily available option, but uh, you can certainly search me through Google, um, Yellow Pages, you know, etc. Mm -hmm. And where are you based? 
Uh, I'm in Newport Beach, California. And do you do telephone consultations? Uh, not at the moment. I, do, I don't for, the, for this anyways. Um, I, I do consultations in the sense that uh, initial contact, um, you know, patients uh, that are interested in coming for treatment, but, uh, you know, doing remote care, I'm not really set up to do. Okay. Well, thank you very much for sharing your experience with us. I'm sorry? 